Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking Auburn football, Big War Eagles. Very nice day today. Need you guys to go ahead and click the like button and gals. I actually got some, some ladies in this thing now. Um, go ahead and click the like button. Click the subscribe button. As always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger or Eagle. All right, doing another car cast um, here in the afternoon portion of a beautiful Friday afternoon. All right, so Derek Mason, a lot of questions. I've been looking at your stuff on social media. Derek Mason, we're concerned as to whether he has the personnel to make this defense work. Now, the defense we're referring to is the defense he ran um, famously at Vanderbilt and Stanford. A lot of NFL teams like to kind of copycat this defense as well because they feel like it works, especially against a mobile quarterback. Now, we're wondering on a couple of different levels if this will work at Auburn based on the personnel because for a few years, Kevin Steele runs kind of a 4-3, 4-2-5 type uh, defense that left them absolutely vulnerable in, in the flat left them absolutely vulnerable in the intermediate passing game. It was just not a sound defense at times, in my opinion. You remember those third down and 15s that Auburn gives up? Yep, just bad schematics. Um, anyway, you know, as we look at Derek Mason, look at Derek Mason, defensive coordinator, there's a certain type of skill set and a certain type of uh, prototypical player that you need to make this for this 3-4 defense work. And there's a couple of different elements to this. Number one, you have to have relatively tall, I think, uh, very uh, strong, and they have to have a little weight on them, okay? The defensive linemen have to. Now, the good news is, is most of the defensive linemen that Auburn has actually kind of fit the category. You have Kobe Wooten, who's put on a little bit more weight. He probably put on a little bit more, especially after strength. you factor in strength and conditioning. Then you have, then you have um, Jaron Handy, who is also about 6'3", about 280 pounds. You, you, you want to be around that, that, that two, 280, no more than 316 pounds. Um, to make this work. Also, when you look at some of the recruits from the 2021 recruiting class, you definitely have a skill set. You, you, you have more of a skill set of players who can actually help out on the defensive line um, with this 3-4 defensive scheme. Now, as you dive into the Auburn 20. 20 recruiting class you definitely have a couple of guys that could actually really help out with uh depth in this um in this scheme now Derek mason was was very successful especially in his first couple of years at vanderbilt but kind of tapered off i mean you know wasn't able to to really get the talent uh that he needed to make this defense work and, and to be fair with you just didn't get a lot of help from the offense. I mean, they would make great stops, and then they're right back on the field. You can't play teams like Georgia, Alabama, teams like that, and expect to be successful even on defense because after a while, you guys will wear out. Now, when we look into the 2020 recruiting class, um, we have Zakevius Walker, who's 6'4", 260 pounds at the time of his recruitment. But now I would imagine... Now, he's probably about 6'4", probably upwards in about 280-something pounds and could gain, like I said before, you gain a lot of muscle when you have a, a strength and conditioning coach that kind of sort of knows what they're doing. So I think as far as linemen go, you definitely have the potential skill set. The only concern now is, is depth. Now, you got a guy coming from the 2021 recruiting class, which is Jay Hardy. He definitely fits the size profile. 6'4", about 330 pounds. Yeah, he's, he's more than in there. All right, now here's also the good news. The good news is, is that the majority of these guys actually played the 3-4 offense, which, which I mean defense, which is a very sensible defense, played it in high school. 
Kobe Wooten played it at Archer High School. So it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting how they revert back to something that they're familiar with. Now, the second phase of this is that Derek Mason asked his defensive lineman to cover two gaps. Basically, a read and react type situation to where you're a down lineman, you're normally lined up directly in front of the offensive tackle or might, in a rare occasion, might slide in between a little bit, but you're, you're lined up directly in front of the offensive tackle, and then you have a, a, nose, a nose tackle who definitely has to anchor his portion of the, of the line, and then you're forced to read and react to a gap based on what the offensive line shows you. That takes a lot of cognitive energy and it takes a lot of speed and I, and, I, and and quickness at the point of attack. And you gotta be pretty good at using your hands as well down here. You gotta be strong as well to withstand those blocks because sometimes you're gonna, you may get caught up in a double team. You're gonna have to be able to fight that stuff off. But luckily with the three, four defense, you have a lot more support from your linebackers than what a what a 4-2 has to offer. That's why you had a lot of situations where running backs was running free down the field because all, all the offensive linemen had to do was block down, make it to the next level, kind of kind of shove uh, Owen Papo and Zacoby, Zacoby McClain around. Next thing you know, you got a big play, okay? This, this type of defense leaves you a lot less vulnerable for huge plays. Now, you may give up a 15-yarder here and there, but they'll sacrifice that little stuff um, to take away the big plays. A lot of what else you're going to see, especially looking at the linebacker position, um, Zacoby McClain played in this defense in high school, Owen Papo played in this defense in high school, and it is assumed that the possibility of TD Moultrie coming back to play his true position, which is linebacker anyway, might be the Mike linebacker next year in this particular defense. And all of these guys are very familiar with this. That's what makes this so exciting and what makes this what should be a pretty simple... Uh, uh, I'm not going to say a simple transition, but it is a transition that can be made. The only factor is, like I said before, is determining the depth factor. How guys develop, how, guys, how you get guys ready to develop in this particular system. Good news also is, um, you know, you got Tennyson coming back in the secondary. You got a, a wealth of, of talent there. Like I said, the only thing that you have to think about is the depth factor. All right, guys, Kennard Vernon Stewart here again for the podcast. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely thank you all for subscribing to the channel. Go ahead and uh, leave your comments. I've uh, been very interested in the comments here lately, um, actually kind of st kind of strayed away from a little Auburn content a couple of videos ago. We talked about Alabama and their recruiting abilities and some other. See, I hadn't gotten around to Georgia yet, but we we definitely, I'd say about 99.9, .9 talk about Auburn on the channel. All right, you guys have a great afternoon and war eagle.